Um, thank you very much, uh, Elaine and uh, Joe and Uwe for those uh, wonderful introductions. And of course, uh, thanks to all of you who have come. I, I have to start by actually uh, showing this trophy, which is, is very beautiful. I, I, I'm actually, my wife might actually let me have it uh, at our house. <laughs> It, uh, it reminds me of uh, probably before this <clears throat> what I think the most meaningful trophy I'd won at the time. I was 16 and I won the uh, U.S. Under-21 Chess Championship. I, I reached higher titles later, but that was a very big step. And indeed the great Bobby Fischer came to the tournament every day. The trophy for this was simply magnificent, at least in my mind I remember it as being magnificent. It was donated by a famous cellist, Piatigorsky, uh, and I was told even at the time, you know, it was worth thousands and thousands of dollars, and uh, absolutely the most beautiful trophy I'd ever won. So I, I was given it, and briefly, I don't think it was more than a few minutes, went off to another room because Bobby Fisher was there. And of course, this was New York City, and I came back, and it wasn't there anymore. <laughs> so uh, I don't have a picture of it, but I'll, I'll try to treat this better. Um, anyway, uh, I think uh, this is a huge honor. And I uh, first, you know, have to, you know, thank all the people I've worked with over the years. Uh, first and foremost, my co-authors. Uh, I've, I've been blessed with some extraordinary co-authors. Jeremy Bulo is uh, here today. Uh, I also, Richard Macy and Elaine mentioned them. Uh, Maury Obsfeld, who I wrote my first book with, and uh, Carmen Reinhardt. These are all giants uh, in the economics profession, and I'm very, very fortunate uh, to have worked with. With them. And of course, I, I had uh, uh, fabulous professors. Uh, Stan Fisher uh, was on my thesis committee, um, who uh, I was teasing him just earlier that I wasn't quite mature yet. I guess I'd say the word for it when I was leaving graduate school. I still had my mind partly rooted in chess and was perhaps leaving prematurely. And Stan felt I should stay longer and do a better thesis. But I, I left, uh, but uh, managed to have a job where I, I had time to do further work. Uh, Rudy Dorn, the late Rudy Dornbush, uh, who was my the immediate thesis advisor, uh, these people had a huge influence on me. And certainly, I've had uh, th some fantastic uh, colleagues and other co-authors over the year. That, uh, uh, over the years, so that's certainly a big part of modern research is who you work with. It's very, very hard to just have ideas in a vacuum. Uh, and I'd also say as economics becomes increasingly specialized, it's very hard to sort of understand every aspect of a problem that you work on. And so it's, it's wonderful when you can find co-authors that you have a symbiotic uh, relationship with. Um, I should say a word or two about the, the prize. I, it, it, it is an enormous honor, and I, uh, I certainly take that from the, the tone of some of the congratulations letters I've received, from, particularly from my academic colleagues. I've, I've uh, won some honors in the past, uh, and I certainly say the tone of the congratulations letters is just something different uh, in this. I was uh, mentioning a few uh, to uh, some of the other people on the panel uh, that, that, that I received, uh, you know, with the note of, well, you know, this is a fantastic prize. This is really special. Uh, and, I, and I think uh, that, despite the fact that it's so new, uh, owes itself to many things. Uh, first and foremost is the process. Uh, which Professor Waltz talked about some, uh, and uh, that's that's very uh, very extensive and widely disseminated. The uh, past winners have been simply extraordinary people. Eugene Fama, uh, actually, my first course as a graduate student at MIT was with Stan Fisher, and I think it was in the first couple lectures, maybe not the first one, you were teaching his work. The efficient markets hypothesis and uh, the, some of the different versions and and, and the challenges. Uh, Mike Woodford, uh, of course, wrote this uh, incredibly influential book on monetary policy, and he was my my colleague for many years at Princeton. 
Uh, Robert Schiller is someone I admire enormously, uh, not simply for the creativity and technical uh, force of his work, but just for his daring, intellectual daringness and some of the ideas he undertakes of really thinking outside the box. So there have certainly been uh, extraordinary previous winners. But also, you know, there's no question that there are many other deserving winners. I, I could start with some of my colleagues, uh, and just in the economics department. I, I don't want to name names because if I miss naming someone, they're going to be insulted. But uh, I think uh, everyone knows that within macroeconomics and financial economics, there are truly some giants just in my department. My co-authors, uh, Carmen Reinhardt, is I think one of the great macroeconomists of modern times, and so is Maury Opsfeld, one of the great international macroeconomists of modern times, and uh, both uh, worthy winners. Uh, the person who succeeded me at the IMF, Raghu Rajan, uh, somebody of extraordinary accomplishment and uh, creativity. And then if I started going into the co-authors of my co-authors, uh, that still that leaves an even bigger pool. And it's, it's, it's clearly uh, an extraordinary uh, pool of people. And so it's a, I, I really, I'm well aware of this and, and feel uh, humbled and, and, and flattered uh, to have been, been given this honor. Uh, Elaine gave a uh, marvelous uh, tour of my work, and I will speak later. And I, I will only say that I think uh, what has motivated me as a macroeconomist is trying to think about how to use a disciplined techniques to look at practical problems. And you're, some of you, some of you, uh, I'm not sure if this was doing anything. Uh, some of you uh, are in academics and are well aware of this, but some of you aren't. And, you know, there, there are huge methodological battles over what economics should be about. And certainly in macroeconomics, uh, broadly my field, a very, very influential school of thought that certainly garnered a number of Nobel Prizes is that it should, you know, to some extent be about the beauty of the models. That's really what the object is. You want to have a very elegant, beautiful model that comprehensively captures a problem. It, and your first focus is not so much on showing what the model can do, but almost more as a counterexample to try to show how deeper, more disciplined thinking uh, can take apart what, what might be some fairly superficial statements. And that's been, a, that's been a wonderful literature, but it's very, very limited, simply because it has very little reference to reality, and there's very little feedback. It's had fairly little influence on reality, too, I should say. But it's, it's been methodologically very valuable. And I think uh, the, the school uh, I come from, and certainly influenced by my thesis advisor, uh, Rudy Dornbush, and also Stan Fisher, but also my co-authors, and I, I actually particularly <coughs> highlight uh, Jeremy, who's here, is the idea that you ought to be about something, that, you know, it's not just a get, it's not just an intellectual game where you're trying to come up with the most complicated prettiest model. It's not just a beauty contest among models, but you're trying to capture an idea and not to have the hubris that you would just have a single model that would capture all reality and you would apply to, uh, to everything. And I, I think that uh, the financial crisis has certainly been, I like to think, somewhat humbling I don't know if that's possible, but I th I'd like to think it's somewhat humbling to those who think, you know, you can just have a simple mathematical model explain everything because uh, human behavior is something that's very hard to repress, and it's very hard to capture that in some very simple, concise mathematical uh, framework. That, <clears throat> that idea that human behavior sort of emerges is, of course, the... Uh, irony in the title of my book with Carmen Reinhardt, This Time is Different, how people always think it's different, and yet over 800 years, it never is. So anyway, with that, I thank very much uh, the jury for giving me this award and to all of you for coming uh, to this symposium. Thank you.